Welcome, critters all over the nation's multiples of those. Welcome to our first Legend of Vox Machina watch party. I Woo! am Mika Burton, and tonight we will be watching episodes one through three of the Legend of Vox Machina. Joining me are a few familiar faces. You may have heard of, probably not, but if you haven't, it's Matt Mercer! Hey! Hey! Hi, Matt Mercer. I do voices and helped out with the stuff in the show. That is what I did, and I'm here to <laughs> talk about it at times, maybe. Hi. And now you know that. that. That was flawless, 10 out of 10. That's what I'm here for, really. to bring the quality. <laughs> to bring the quality of the content, yes, <laughs> yes. But if, if there are those out there who don't know, Matt, what do you do here? Uh, I am the DM for our main show that a lot of this is based on. I created uh, a lot of Exandria, and I voice Silas Briarwood, as well as a bunch of other ancillary characters throughout the world in the series, so. And you have amazing hair. The amazing hair. Well, thank you. And is fond of vests. See, Sam's there to bring me down. <laughs> Appreciate it. And next up, we have the illustrious Travis Willingham. Oh, it's me! It's you! Tell Hi. us about yourself, Travis. Hi, I'm Travis Willingham. I play uh, the lovable but idiotic Grog Strongjaw in The Legend of Vox Machina, and I work with all these yahoos to help produce and write the show. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We also have Sam Regal. Hey everybody, it's me, Sam Regal, coming to you live on Twitch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Natural. natural. 10 out of 10. Natural. Uh, wait, oh, is this natural? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, guys, we got a lot of great content coming up tonight, including a watch along of three awesome episodes of the show, including behind the scenes commentary. Sam. So stay tuned. Sam, who do you voice? Uh, I play Scanlan Shorthalt on the show, and I'm also uh, part of the team that uh, produces the animated series. And we're really excited to do this watch along with all of you tonight. Did you ever try to get on the Mickey Mouse Club when you were younger? I did audition for the I Mickey Mouse Club. I can't imagine why they didn't. I was, I was in the room. <laughs> I was in the room with like Ryan Gosling. Oh. And, um, uh, I feel like Justin Timberlake was there too. For some reason, they did not pick me. Over <laughs> Ryan Gosling? <laughs> Justice for Sam. Yeah. Justice for Sam. Yes. Uh. <gasps> And we cannot forget that we have our very special guest here, Brandon Allman, who is the writer of The Terror of Taldori Parts 1 and 2. And you also have some awesome other illustrious titles. Why don't you tell us about Brandon. yourself, Woo! sir? Well, uh, hi, I'm Brandon Allman. I'm the uh, executive producer and showrunner of The Legend of Vox Machina. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, and I've never done a live stream before, so I'm extremely nervous. Yeah. Um, You're fine. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited to be here. And uh, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna be playing Fortnite all night. Is that okay? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. The oh. controllers are beneath your couch, so if everyone oh, will right. pull them out now, we'll oh, uh, begin okay, the competition. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually <laughs> throwing some Resident Evil. I'm down. down. That's yeah. that's true. But I also feel like the critters are already probably talking about this, and we should mention it. We're on a brand new set. Oh, that's yes. never been seen before. Yes, that's right. By those eyes out there. So Ooh. feast your eyes. There's all sorts of fun details. I noticed. Like there's garlic and stuff over there. Is that to ward off evil spirits? I, yeah, it's yeah. for the vampires. Oh. Or seasoning. Okay. What's the oh. matter with you? Yeah. Why do you gotta make it all magical? And shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun though. This is all real too. Like these are. This is this, real. Yeah. yeah. Oh, We're here in person. I'm walking oh, around. Oh, there he goes. There goes. And, there goes, and, there goes, and the mic pack's dangling. There he goes. It's not, like, it's not a green screen. You can move. Oh God. Did yep. I just, I, no, it's dangling. Oh yep. Sorry. Yep. All right. Well polished. I'm gonna hit you with a machine. <laughs> so glad that nothing has changed. This is phenomenal. <laughs> oh, the rails feels like. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm quaking my boots. Make, make me feel nice and comfortable. Yes, absolutely. There was no reason to be nervous. This is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and now, without further ado, let us we're jump just, into. We're just jumping in. We're just, we're doing, just doing it. it. Yeah. Okay. okay so oh, wow. everyone's like signed in and ready to go. I hope. Stuff? Okay. We're gonna give them. Okay. If you're not signed in by now, wait. <laughs> If you're not signed in by now, in we, by now. we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> God. We're moving the goalposts. <laughs> Why did I say yes to this? <laughs> so, love you, me, with, we love you guys so much. Without further ado, let us jump into episode one of the legend of Vox Machina, The Terror of Taldore, part one. Woohoo! Okay, ready? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? We're ready. ready. And hip play go. Hip play. Woo! Yes, do it. Wow, we, we did it. 
You guys, we we, we just uh, watched along with a, an episode. We did. I assume, we did. I assume there were some t some technical difficulties with some of the viewers, and I hope you, that you stuck around for them. Oh, oh, yes. solve them because yeah. that was really fun. That was really fun. Yeah. Really. Do you guys mind if we like do some que some Q and A? Let's yeah. Some questions. Yeah. Let's do some yeah. questions yeah. and also subsequently some answers. Let's do it. All right. Well, we're gonna talk to Matt first. Oh God! Um, so I'm do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, good night, everybody. We're we're ending here. Sorry. Bye. No. Uh, but so going all the way back to campaign one, making all of this come to life in cartoon form. Can you take us back to like day one, in the writers' room for Legends of Vox Machina, and walk us through what was going through your head as you prepared to hand off your baby, your your little baby, oh, to man. all of the writers and animators? It was. Your little, your little it flesh was baby. extremely anxious, um, partially because I didn't want to em embarrass everybody by going in here and just like talking about my D and D campaign. As everyone who's played, <laughs> played knows, like talking about your D and D game to your friends that don't care. It's like, oh, oh yeah. I didn't want to be that guy in the room, but I was like, no, there's are here for that reason. But <laughs> yeah. we all still get that anxiety. Yeah, yeah. it's still there. Um, but it was for me. It was, it was just very surreal. Um, it was helpful that I had a lot of these guys with me, so I didn't feel alone in that process. Yeah. And a lot of the early, honestly, a lot of the early meetings were more character focused, if I recall. Mm, it was like right. breaking down who the main characters were, kind of, you know, uh, what their arc was, their, where their stories were going, what their strengths and abilities were, what their heart and, you know, persona was about. So thankfully, the, the transition in the early days were more kind of a group effort, getting everyone in the writer's room up to speed with the main characters. So by the time it came around to us really like digging into the story and the world, um, I was a little more comfortable about it. But it was it was very nerve wracking yeah. and a very a very wild experience. Uh, partially when people began to really engage with it and then show how talented they were in a writer's room to like make it even better. So yeah, it was really cool. And I'm sure that must be an interesting experience, knowing where the story is going to end already, but having to go back to the beginning. As we can see in episode one, there's some hints to some romances that may happen. There's some Easter eggs for what? people that oh. may have already seen all of campaign one. <laughs> How was that process making sure that it wasn't too heavy handed, but since you can kind of not so much retcon, but yeah. inform earlier on. Well, it's a challenge when like, you know, f to use that as an example, when a romance develops over, you know, many, many hours of gameplay, mm -hmm. but then you have to convey that same arc in a shorter period of time. You want to make sure that it doesn't feel forced but it still has a natural speed to the where when the beats do come up that make sense within the story, it doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of discussions about that, about how we can truncate this, these different periods of time, but still feel natural and still be a, you know, a believable pace as they go forward. And so it was a lot of, a lot of conversations about that as we went yeah, through the story. Yeah, it's true. If you really break down some, some, of, some of the story arcs that go over the season or seasons, um, like some of the romance stuff, if you really like, with a stopwatch, time how long we get to spend on those on screen it's like <laughs> it's like seven minutes over the course yeah. of the season yeah. so you really have to like pack it in and and be efficient with um what you're gonna show and what you're gonna leave out and uh, but it, but like matt was saying the writers that that uh that came on board really treated everything so seriously and they they did their they they did research on the characters and even the ones who didn't know anything about critical role came into the into the first meetings like knowing a lot about the characters and treating them like like real characters, mm -hmm. which sure. I guess they are. <laughs> at yeah. the beginning, they didn't feel like it. But they're <laughs> real. Yeah. They're on and, a show. And, and even just like the non-main characters. Like for me, one of the most exciting parts was going and revisiting some of these NPCs that maybe didn't have as, as large of an involvement in the main story, because I didn't want the, to, to rob the agency of the players and we're playing the game, it's their game. But now that we're telling the story in different media, we get to bring some of these NPCs and make them cooler. Mm. You know, uh, elevate their involvement in the story, change them to make more sense within the short form narrative and make them just more interesting interesting and, and fun to follow. Uh, so it was it was kind of cool to revisit a lot of these characters and, and have all these people m help make it an even better, you know, part of the story. What a cool privilege to have to complete this entire story over years and they get to do it again, but feel like you can fix some things that you wanted Honestly, to fix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I have no, no it's, there's no absence of buts. Like there, when you're improvising a story at a table, there are, there are rough bits, there are <laughs> things that don't go quite how you hoped they would, there are things that I'm like, oh, I could have done that better when I'm in the car driving home afterward, you know? Mm -hmm. Every DM can uh, you know, commiserate with that, but having the ability to go back and, and make, kind of make amends with some of these beats and, and show different perspectives that aren't just the players, yeah. you know, that's been really cool. Well, speaking of developing the characters, I know that we have some really cool uh, progress art for oh, some of the characters oh. that are here today, and I want to start off Travis, and the character of Grog, Tell us what the process was to put Grog in 
cartoon form. In this? In this, in, in what he is now. The Are we to see some of it, or is he just talking here? Uh, the, the folks at home should be seeing it. Oh, yeah, awesome. We get to no, see it. it was great, because uh, as we've said before, um, I had a fateful flight with uh, Phil Barassa, incredible oh, cool. uh, character designer. And, uh, you know, I said <laughs> I sent him some reference images for Grog and along with uh, some descriptions of what I wanted to see. And he sent back stuff that just blew my mind. Yes. So in particular, there's one where Grog's got some dope mutton chops. Uh, <laughs> he's got like a really cool chin beard. He's got the whole Abe Lincoln thing going on. Mm -hmm. I particularly mm -hmm. like that axe. Um, and I, I mean, you know, he was just he was just dead on from the start. Uh, and it was cool watching him tweak things with his expressions like he, you know, made the ears a little bit smaller so that his expressive, cute uh, 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 face journeys could, could be more easily recognized. And we just kind of tweaked, you know, some of his, uh, his markings and stuff because I think part of his original design in the show was uh, a little bit complicated just around the face. And a lot of what we had to do as we looked at the designs was find an economy of art and style so that it, it's easy to draw, you know, over a, a length of time. Um, but uh, I mean, he's just a big, he's just a big goof and uh, yeah, he crushed it. Yeah. I like his tiny ears personally. They're very yeah. adorable. They add to his cuteness. Phil is yeah. amazing. Serious, like so talented. Super talented. Um, Sam, yes. would you like to explain a little bit of the process of Scanlan? Sure, I mean, f I, I don't remember what order some of these, uh, we're gonna see a bunch of drawings. They, they aren't uh, necessarily in order. Like I, I feel like for Scanlan, we, we saw some stuff that was really good and amazing. And I think we were like, this is great, but maybe we should just explore a bit. Yeah, <laughs> so I think, all of them. Yeah, so I think, we, oh, and yeah. Uh, and so we, uh, Phil sort of went went on a on an exploratory journey just to show us some different other Scanlans that might exist. Mm -hmm. um, Wild child Scanlans? Yeah, Alternate I don't know if the, He has some people, ruffian looks in there. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> see it on the screen, but I, 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 if the people are seeing it, yeah, there's, there's some Scanlans that are, a, a little bit more wild child, uh -huh. uh, street urchin type, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then there's oh yeah they're there. Uh, then there's there's a version of Scanlan who's way more sort of slick lounge lizard type of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know don't the forget the tooth is really yeah don't forget yeah. to tip your waitresses like that, <laughs> that kind of vibe. Um, but we I think we actually kind of mashed mashed them together a bit and got a little of the of the cocky wild charm with the the slick the slickness. And uh, and really dialed in on the the chest hair curl curly cues. Yeah. Those had to be perfect. As a as as a, a body hair person myself, I'm happy to see some representation. You're a body hair person. What does that mean? I'm a person with body hair. Oh, okay. I, I, I as well <laughs> subscribe to the body hair club. <laughs> I didn't know this was a club you could subscribe to. Uh, learned a lot today. Well, there's you know subscriptions to everything. Yeah, that's very true. You're right. Now, before we go down a really weird tangent that'll get us kicked off of Twitch. Fair enough. Uh, Good call. Good Brandon, call. I wonder, uh, I wonder if there's a subscription service where you can order body hair. See, and this is why I interrupted. Oh. I should have kept talking. Should we look into but then I let Sam talk. All right, down. Brennan. Uh, when we first meet oh. Vox Machina and Iman, we're just gonna. Um, we see them getting drunk, and as uh, such a good first scene, like I said earlier, it's a good job of giving the audience a tiny piece of each character and what we're gonna be getting from them, but obviously a little turned up to 11, mm -hmm. as they are incredibly inebriated. So what was that process like, getting to really focus on each one of the Vox Machina? Well, it was really like collaborating with, you know, the cast, trying to figure out what are the perfect moments to really highlight their character. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just like, you know, we want to establish things about the characters as well, like Vex and Vax are brother and sister, and, you know, Scanlan sings, and he's also, you know, he's he's also very horny. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we wanted to just, you know, you have to, you have no time to sort of establish everyone quickly. Right. So that, that was sort of the trickiest part, is like we want to introduce all these characters, these fantastic characters, to, you know, not to critters, but to, a, a brand new audience. So that was, you know, very, very tricky. And do it quickly and rapidly so it's not too tedious or laborious. You know, you, like you really want it to like, to sing very quickly and just and just make it happen. You get to know everyone. You know, Percy's kind of a tight ass. He's not even participating in the, in the drinking games. It's, it's really just kind of trying to figure out like moments and, and you know, you can immediately identify these characters by what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, what's the saying? Drunken words are sober thoughts. Totally. I think it's the... <laughs> the best way to highlight everyone in their personality. I think you guys did a phenomenal job. And the, the barfing. 
The barfing. Wonderful. Barfing. I mean, yeah. it's on brand for Keyleth. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. You look back in the campaign, she's always been that girl at the party. Oh. So true. It's she really, yeah, she oh. really had a bad track record with yep. barfing. Yeah. Ooh, is I'm she like, like I, the Everclear yeah. at a party type of girl? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Was, was it low constant? I, I can't tell. I can't remember what I it think was. It, was low it just always ended up coming out. <laughs> I just, she just, well, she, she, she was, she was new to the party scene, I think. Like, like, <laughs> like Pike grew up with Grog. Like, they've been around right. the block a few right. times. They've had drinking games. She got handed like, the bottle of Goldschlager and everything yeah, went down yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very much. It's got in it. Yeah, no, that is, that is, that is the key yeah. experience. I speak, I speak the first one. Somebody yeah. hands her a cup yeah. of jungle juice and they don't tell her it's like 50% Everclear. And yep. then all of a sudden, yep. Yep. Yeah, there she goes. That's her in a nutshell. Not that that was a personal <laughs> story or anything. No, not at all. No, 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 not at all. Not at all college anyway <laughs> so folks from chat they want to know things okay so we're gonna right. ask a ask a chat question Hi, chat. Uh, chat wants to know what was the most challenging part of the process deciding what to keep in the story versus what happened during the campaign on stream Oh boy! Oh, the whole process, <laughs> all of yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, the the nice thing was is that we ran an inventory in the beginning. Like we 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 basically rewatched all the episodes ourselves just to refamiliarize ourselves with anything, and then we just came up with a list of like all of the incredible beats, moments, side quests, even shopping episode things, things that we just knew that we loved or that the audience resonated with. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go through like the painstaking part of like what goes, what stays, what can we merge. Mm -hmm. You know, we we had such a short runway. We had to be really clever in the way that we set it up. And also, we took an opportunity to go like, can we rearrange some of these things? Can we that's, move them that's later? What I was gonna say, yeah. yeah, and that was I think that was also that was the fun part though, because it was kind of like bringing everybody's like you know collection of baseball cards together, like laying them <laughs> all on the table, and then like picking your your favorite starting lineup. It was it was really fun. That's awesome. But also, how cool is it that? Eventually, once we go through more, more seasons, there are going to be people out there that are going to go, well, in the original campaign, this is actually what happened. <laughs> like, how cool is it that yeah. you're going to get those reactions? Like when we all went to go see movies based off of books and we were like, well, in the books, this is actually what happened. Oh, yeah. Like, that's so cool. That is cool. Yeah. That's just, happening just now. Just don't be a dick right? about it. No, don't be a dick about it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but but you can impress your friends. But yeah, see, there you go. Yeah, that's always fun. hundred percent. And and they should know that, you know, we, we have set this up so that it will pay off, you know, uh, far, far down the line. So everything's done with intent. Attention. Nothing's done by accident. I mean, it's y'all's baby, your collective child that you all birthed. Anyway, yes. next question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this is for everyone. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, creating Iman as a city in the cartoon, there are a few differences between the Iman that folks may know from the campaign versus the one that we saw on our screen. Can you kind of dive into the process of creating that city and That's a good question. how we got there um, today? And look, there it is. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, Arthur Love. Yeah, honestly, Arthur Loftus and a lot of the design team, it was it was back and forth with them, where they were fans of the show, they had copies of the original guide, Aww. and, and all the designs are based on the original maps of the city, mm -hmm. um, but once again, when you bring it to visual life, and you have the opportunity to do whatever shape you want to, you want to make it grandiose and interesting and visually arresting, and they're so good at that, so it was a lot of... You know, the layout's fairly similar to the original maps. Uh, it's just more having the chance to show elevation mm. and expand some spaces and just kind of make it more cool for the, you know, the visual medium of, of animation. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was directly working with the design team and just kind of throwing notes and, back and forth and, and doing we, tweaks. Didn't we, we pushed the Cloud Top District a little closer to the water, right? Right, because it made more sense. Like, once again, Iman's original designs were also very much me not being a person that designs cities for a living. <laughs> what do you mean, you know, Matt? I'm You're not an artist. You don't have a degree in yeah. engineering and city planning? I am not. And, <laughs> and so part of the, the fun, you know, collaboration is working with people who have a little more understanding or research deeper into some of these facets and mm -hmm. considering, like, both the Skyport presentation and the, the heavy docks of Iman, wanting to make sure that the, the, the uh, you know, the center of the city, the, the, the power seat of the city and the, the palace being something that is a little more central and closer to the dock area it would make a little more sense, both for like a trade standpoint and just as a, as a, a visual beacon of leads people, almost like a lighthouse to the city during the day from port. And like, it was just a lot of cool discussions that's kind of expanded the world building that I had done a while back and making it that much cooler. Yeah, That's awesome. I feel like at some point there has to be some sort of like Matt just sits down and rambles about the decisions and the process behind everything oh, because don't listen this is? it's i mean that <laughs> this is a truncated version but just hearing i feel like all of this emotion and thought behind it that maybe we've seen him on for a brief second we won't understand just from seeing one spire that you wanted it to be a beacon or a lighthouse you know just things like that i feel like really add to the world i, I will say um 
I'm very thankful that we have the design team on this that we do because mm -hmm. every single time they've ever come to me with a facet of the world, they've come already from a place of loving the world, mm -hmm. researching it immensely or knowing it already very well and already having such a clear idea of wanting to bring it to life that I've had v honestly very few notes and it's more just like, Aww. this is cool, how can we tweak and make it better? Like there's there's really never been a point where it's been like, no, this is all wrong, start from <laughs> stuff. Like, true. like they've all been fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, I. it feels weird because you're ready to go in and fight, but then you're like, no, this is, this is actually really cool. <laughs> I think it was you that maybe retweeted it. Somebody tweeted two pictures and said, uh, what was it, that meme like, where we started, where we are now, and oh, it was yeah. like a picture of your map from campaign one, oh. and then like a screen cap of the moment in the show. They even kept the circular carpet. Oh yeah, yeah, with the miniatures. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, that, the two yeah. pictures. What yeah, does no. that oh. feel like? Like crazy. Like is that insane? I, I can't, man. <laughs> <sighs> but but once again, like that, that's the care that that these people put into the project. Yeah. You know, there's only so much our passion can go if the rest of the people that actually execute and bring this thing to life mm -hmm. don't have the same level of passion, but they Absolutely. do, right. like across yeah. the board. Yeah. Everybody I've met and talked to, everybody I've I've met after the production, in fact, that worked on this, like every person I've, I've, I've had a conversation with that has been a part of this has been as excited as we are, and that comes through in the final episodes. Like, I've, I've never been part of something that was this large in scale, but also like universally just positive and excited. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how to break this to you, but you're universally positive and exciting, and <laughs> everything that you guys do is wholesome and wonderful, and you feel the passion. So it's not a surprise that everybody you've worked with has felt that passion and been infected by it. Aw, super sweet. Now I'm gonna have another heavy sip of this nondescript, <laughs> totally non Drink in a cup. beverage. Yep. So now, episode two of The Legend of Vox Machina, The Terror of Taldore, part two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's hit hit it. Hit the play. Hit the hit play. The, hit the, Is hit that the what play. kids say uh -huh. these days? All right. All righty. What do we do now, Mika? Well, now, uh, oh, we're, 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 we're not done. We're, we're not done. Watch another episode tonight. We, yes, but okay. before that, guess what? What? Questions. Chicken butt. And so, <laughs> Sorry, that's that what? was real, real old. Late. Wow, we got kids. I, I say to my kids, kids yes. every time yeah. they say, "Guess what?" I always Ooh. say, "Chicken butt." They get so annoyed. Yeah, I went back <laughs> to the nineties on that. That one. was incredibly that's dad. Early. Though. Though. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, for Matt and Brandon, this two-parter pilot has a lot of new stuff that was sort of adapted from pre-stream events. So, can you guys walk us through the choice to have the series start here and what it was like adapting things that happened pre-stream? Uh, I'll say it, it began with us trying to decide what would be a one a good arc to introduce the characters where they're still early enough in their relationship where they aren't they aren't fully established as heroes necessarily, and, and but can still show them kind of finding themselves working together well and, and really accomplishing something that's noteworthy, and will ingratiate them to Iman and the powers of the Taldorei Council and Sovereign Uriel. And so, you know, this was really one of the events in the home campaign that really began to solidify that relationship. So it was an easy go-to for that. Also, elements of this set up events that we hope to come to down the line, which those of us who know campaign one will know what we're discussing about. But like, you know, using this arc allows us to seed facets for later stories that we hope to tell as we go on. So that was kind of the initial thought process behind it. And then from there it was, like I said, taking all the old DM notes, us deciding on moments from the home campaign, yeah. and then kind of letting the rest of the team work with us to make it that much cooler. Yeah, and there was a completely different two-parter originally. Like we had talked about doing something utterly different, and it was like it involved like the team being like mind controlled and like a and like a tunnel or something underneath the it was, keep. It was sort of a it was a little bit too like it just wasn't working. Yeah. I remember coming in and just and just knowing that it just it wasn't a good intro to the characters. Yeah, we we knew the characters so well and and we had thought like it wouldn't it be cool to sort of like get into their heads and so we we had beat it out a story where like uh, they get sort of not mind controlled but like you get to see like their worst fears their fears that's what it come was come to life and was this like in the crystal fen caverns beneath them on yeah, I think so yeah. yeah and it was cool it was a cool story but as brandon rightly pointed out like if you don't know the characters learning their Deepest, darkest fears <laughs> doesn't really mean a whole lot. Steve's oh, wow, kind of messed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we we uh, changed to this, and it was a brilliant, a brilliant yeah, pivot on Brandon's right, yeah. uh, part. Yeah. Well done. 
I like it. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> earlier, we talked about, while we were watching the show, kind of the casting process for these voices. Um, so Sam and Travis, I would like to kind of hear about well, what was the process of that? Sam, I know you had some, a little bit of something to do with some of these, these voices that were chosen, other than <laughs> obviously the main sure. cast. Um, so can we just talk about how this whole beautiful cast came together? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, uh, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the two of us, uh, the, the whole cast and crew and, and Brandon uh, weighed in on all these decisions, obviously, but um, we just started by kind of writing down a list of all the characters and uh, just kind of like a dream team, a wish list yeah, of- fan cast of like, yeah. who would be the <laughs> coolest for these? 100%. Yeah. Are we gonna it's get that, these guys? It's Is that it gonna happen? Simple. Like yeah. whiteboard, names, ridiculous pitches, people that we never thought would ever in a million years participate. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, yeah. We, we didn't get every single person we went, yep. we, we tried to get. The Rock said no. <laughs> exactly. I said not yet. Well, we got Vin ah. Diesel to call him and it didn't work out. <laughs> Ooh, strong um, choice, strong choice. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a little uh, thing. Uh, but no, but we got, we got a lot, we got a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of our first choices um, yeah. were just, they, they responded, um, they responded to the story of the show. Mm -hmm. Like not, not just the story of the script, which is, is fantastic, but the story of how the show became Became a show, um, and we would pitch, you know, either their representatives or them directly um, with a with a letter or whatever, and say like, you know, you don't know what this show is, you might not be able to understand or, or, uh, how to pronounce the title of the show, <laughs> but let me just tell you a story of, of why this show exists. It, it exists because there are thousands and thousands of people who love this, and there's eight people at a table every week who pour their hearts and souls into these characters, and um, it's from that love uh, and the love of, of the people who watch the show that this is be being made. And does that resonate with you, sort of? <laughs> and you'd be surprised, like, uh, you know, as, as big a uh, name as a lot of these people are, when they hear that story, um, they connect to it. Because, you know, everyone was a, a struggling artist who had a dream at, at some point. And, uh, and a lot of these people were, uh, the a amazing actors in our show were just like, yeah, I wanna be part of that. I wanna be part of this passionate fan group, you know, and, um, I, and part of your, I wanna be part of your dream, basically. And so they signed on and it was really great. I'll also say that uh, we definitely pulled up videos of each one of our targeted actors and then like looked at the character image, played a video file, and we were like, mm, yes, I think it fits well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, little chin scratches. <laughs> I do hope whenever things become a little more healthy, you know, in a, a hopeful post-COVID world, to be able to meet some of these actors face to face. I've never met uh, most know, of them. <laughs> and tell them like, shake their hand and be like, thank you, and then cry heavily yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of them That's for being right. a part of this. Cause it's I'm also so wild thankful. now, as big as uh, a name as some of these folks are, I've been getting DMs and, and texts from some of them saying like, mm -hmm. Holy shit! Your fans are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, after true. the show came out, the, you know, they're like, uh, my my Instagram is blowing up because of you guys. And Hopefully, David job. Tennant texted you exactly David word for word. Holy shit! David Tennant <laughs> reached out and, and thanked thanked us uh, for including him in the show. And yeah. like, they they can hear you guys. They they see yeah. they see the critter love. They felt the critter hug for sure. The doctor knows you guys. That's right. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure on us right and now. Other people in the industry. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, it's it's something that has kind of reached beyond the borders of just the nerd world. Like, people who I know in my life who have nothing to do with anything that we do at all have been like, isn't that that thing, the thing that I saw on the front page of Amazon Prime? Like, don't you, don't, don't you work with them sometimes? I'm like, yes, <laughs> you now know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, finally, you understand what I do for a living. It's very, it's very validating. So thank you from the bottom of my heart yeah. <laughs> for being so mainstream now that everybody's like, oh, I get it. I was just, I was just super excited. Like, my, my grandma and grandpa Come on. Like, were texting, like, the no. show is so great. We saw the first three episodes. I'm like, oh, that's oh. awesome. And I sit there and think, oh. they've listened to <laughs> Sam sing about anal beads. <laughs> and watched me pee on it. And watched you pee on it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Sure. Animals. Sure. Yeah. The final fig leaf. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But you know what? They still loved it. They did. They and enjoyed that's it. That's what matters. Experience. Exactly. It's, they've seen balls before. They it's love balls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Brandon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Every grandparent has seen a ball. <laughs> Me oh, fans anyway, balls. so Brandon. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so we touched a little bit uh, already on on dragons. <laughs> Ooh, let's, let's talk about. 
Again, I ask, why am I here? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, you put up with me, so it's okay. So Brimsythe, Cool Lightning Brimsythe. Dragon. Let's talk about the design. What was the design process like? Oh man, well we talked about it a little bit, but yeah, we decided to go with CG because it's just so impossibly just difficult to you know render a, a, just a hand-drawn dragon. You really can't do it. Like it's going to have to be super simplified. It's not going to look that great. Um, but yeah, so we went with CG because that's really the way to go. You can get all kinds of details on the the wings, the scales, the claws. Um, yeah, I mean it, it made the most sense. Um, but like we had mentioned earlier. It was a little cute early on, like uh, not the designs. The designs were pretty much perfect. I mean, you've got, you've got Phil like just knocking it out of the park design-wise. But when we first looked at the, um, you know, the CG model, the, like you know what we said, the eyes were too expressive, the snout was a little bit too cute. So we had to kind of figure out ways of altering it. But the CG model was already done, mm. so that was just you know sort of a you know a little bit harrowing, a little bit nerve-wracking. But but we got it there, and um, and I think it came out killer. It was so cool too because as you saw he gave us all these different you know choices uh, to choose from and we would pick and choose different features and you know we also had conversations like are there physical parts that are going to activate as he charges up you know mm -hmm. his his weapon and everything and it was it was just such a, a fun like little tinker shop to to work in and you always try to uh, keep in mind like other dragon designs are out there so that you're doing something that's you unique. Know, unique and, right. and yeah and new yeah. and if you scroll through or if they flip through the the designs like you'll see that the heads uh, sort of evoke different Different animal shapes, mm -hmm. lion shapes, or shark shapes, or yeah. you know other other kind of animal uh, designs. Yeah, and one's a little more bestial. And, kind and of they're gonna talk. Right? Monster hunter. Yeah. Yeah. They were gonna talk too. It's dragon. not just yeah. roaring. Yeah. 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 You have to have personality. I mean, the dragon has to talk. It has to speak. So you know, you're thinking about all those factors going in. It has to fly. It's 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 you know it's flying in a specific space. It's mm -hmm. just very it's very complicated. Also the weakness. You know, seeing the the twin rivers, the the power up in its throat. Like that was very specific. We had to figure out just it, it, yeah, it was a very complicated process, but I think we got it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd be scared of the dragon, so it's pretty scary. Pretty scary dragon. God, I still think the moment in the first episode when when they first fight it and Scanlan's running from it and it comes and does like the side bite and just like carves through oh, like yeah. five that low angle yeah. 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 The minute I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like the concept of a dragon in fantasy anything, you're like, okay, you fight dragons, like sure. Great. Yeah. It kind of you kind of become numb to the concept of dragons, which make is hilarious. How do you make it unique yeah. and how do you make it scary? This was a very unique and scary dragon. You want to make sure that it, it, it had size, but also had moments of, of extreme speed. That's right. And you see it at the top of, of the second episode, especially when it's like taking out the army. It's like you know it can it can move with unexpected speed at that size, yeah. and you know that that was definitely one of the in, intentional elements of the, of the the animation. For sure. Also, the corpses were burned to a crisp. There's that too. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Sorry, Felicia. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Anyway, so question from chat. Um, this is for everyone. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry. This is for. It's kind of for everyone. For the voice actors. It's just for Matt. It's just for. Oh, just it's for just mainly for Matt. It's <laughs> mainly for Matt. So, what is the acting process for adapting your characters' voices and mannerisms between informal improv role playing and acting from a script? Are there any changes that you needed to make, or that an actor generally needs to make to make it feel more natural, or does it feel more natural to play them in either environment rather than the script or an improv? Uh, I mean, that's, that's seven questions in one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the chat wanted to know a lot of things all sure, at once. Sure, sure, sure. I, 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 even though our amazing producer, Ashley Middlebrook, told me, do not look at chat during this. I've been looking at chat. And I saw, <laughs> Damn. I saw, I saw some people asking about like how much is improvised, how much is, uh, is not improvised and stuff. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, Brandon writes a good script, so we didn't have to improvise much. Um, but uh, especially for these first few episodes when we were all together in the room, it just sort of happened naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and not just, uh, not entire lines, but you know, the, the punch lines of things or the beginnings of lines or the way we would stammer into a line or whatever was, was improvised. I don't think um, a lot of like the characterizations changed from the home game to the, to the uh, recording room, um, but certainly uh, you had to worry a little bit more about just that, your acting, right? Like, because yeah, yeah. when, when we're at the table, we just sort of say things in character. But 
um, unless it's like a, a vital, important moment, you're just kind of saying things. You're not like, what's my motivation for this moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you um, but but for, for this, like we know every scene has, has an intention and like we're driving towards something. And so we just had to just be on a little bit more through the, through the process. But it was so, it was so great to be there with with our friends in the room, yeah. you know, vibing yeah. off each other yeah. it was so cool. Aside from just like the little, the little bits of, of improv that come naturally, you know, every every script also gets seen by the cast too, in case they want to like tweak a line to be a little more in their character's voice, you know, or, or we kind of just make sure that every we're comfortable with all the scripts and we don't have to do much, you know, because uh, these people are amazing who are writing them. But we also want to make sure that we're all comfortable with the dialogue being very much on voice for everybody's own characters yeah. since they've created them and lived with them for so long. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and to a degree, there's even, you know, some adjustments there, but yeah, I mean, it's, we've lived with these characters for years and years, front to back, the whole story with them. So like, yeah, we're, we're all pretty comfortable stepping back into those shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wore shoes, Mika. That's the bottom line. No some feet, <laughs> no feet on Twitch. We, we can't show our feet on Twitch, yeah. we wear shoes. You wear shoes, that. you hear that TOS. Twitch? We all wear shoes. <laughs> can I just can I well, put my butt up under? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we talk a little bit about how the dice may have affected the story? Did you guys completely honor how the roles came out in story? Did that affect how you wanted to tell the story in the show versus how it happened Yeah, well, we the kept campaign. a very strong record of every dice roll <laughs> in, in the home game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten, Sorry, ten Brandon, that ago. scene has to end differently because... Well, because I failed my <laughs> charisma ago. check, actually, so... <laughs> yeah, we just kind of looked at it in terms of, like, a story beats, right? Um, yeah. if, if there was a, a failure on our parts, right, a nat one, um, it usually made for a hilarious story beat, and that was something that we loved and we kept for the story. You know, uh, adversely, if there was a great success, then that probably stayed in as well. Um, did we do any early rolling in the writing room to see? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. I think it was less about rolling, and then more like saying in a moment of failure, be like, "That's that's like you rolled a three. Or, you know, and a really, <laughs> yeah. really like, yeah. like with little rollies, you know, rollies yeah. in yeah. the writing yep. room. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Or like when Vax, you know, dragged his daggers down the dragon in that fight. There, we're like, that's a fucking natural twenty. Yeah, that's yeah. A twenty so right there. It's less like saying the dice roll and then tailing the story to the dice roll. It's more okay. like creating the story beats that that we think are cool and make sense for the moment, and then tailoring dice rolls that made sense for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I feel like we did get to see a little bit of. Uh, some social interactions where people who are, are familiar with the game would understand that that may have been a failed check. Yeah. That may have been a failed and, roll. And, sure. and that, I think, was, was the goal. We wanted, wanted to we wanted it to feel natural to our home game, you know, and then our game here to where those things guide the story. Mm -hmm. And so those beats naturally bring along with them the feeling of those dice rolls. Ooh. Anybody who plays the game, is familiar with our game, can definitely kind of read between the lines and be like, I, I see what that is. Yeah, yeah. early on, <laughs> I, in episode one, Percy fires his weapon and it, uh -huh. it, it misfires and that it's like it's just a little nod to like not everything's gonna work in this <laughs> in this world <laughs> right? yeah sometimes chance is against you um speaking of people who may be familiar with the game and familiar with things that have happened let's talk a little bit about gilmore's glorious goods oh, yeah. Yeah. and how phenomenal that shop is, uh, and f how phenomenal Gilmore, the magic zaddy himself, <laughs> is. Um, and there were a lot of Easter eggs in that shop. Um, I think we mentioned the Tusk Love book, you mentioned the Triceratops head, there are, mm -hmm. there's a little weasel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little crimson weasel little in there. A little crimson weasel in there, yep. and we have some art oh, yeah. here of the concept and the designs and how it came to it's life, so the cool. second floor you're talking about. Look at that art. Way. So yeah, pretty. the the upper the upper deck the upper decker area. <laughs> oh God, uh, that's something else. <laughs> Arthur had created this area where you can try on armor and try on your your wares before you buy them. Um, it's like a whole modeling runway sort of. I love it. Area we don't get to do much there in the series, but it's just so cool that it's yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we we talked a lot about like the the color palette of Gilmore's. I think. In the first pass through, it was most it was mostly purple, and then we I can I think we varied it up with more gold. Added some gold in there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's lots of Easter eggs, probably some that I don't even know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are there yeah, any sure. at the top of your head that you can remember other than the ones we've mentioned? I mean, there's the sandal of Gygax yeah. in there, yeah. that which Chris Pronosky is the still the owner of. He I owns that. Think, I think he, he only got it for one year. Or did he oh, pass it on? I think he passed it on. Okay. But I, I don't I don't I don't know. I don't quote me on that. Chris, <laughs> I think there are a couple hats in the in the shop as oh, well. Oh, there's a witch hat. Yep. yep. Witch's hat. There's, there's, there's a witch's witch hat. hat. Okay. There's a Easter eggy. There's, sort of there's thing. the there's the broom. There's a broom. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. 
Um, it feels like there's a missed marketing slogan for Gilmore's. Come to Gilmore's and get an upper decker. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to flesh out Gilmore's. <laughs> and uh, bring it to life. Nah. Uh, and the whole art team did such a good job. Yeah, all those backgrounds. They, oh. they, there's something in all those shots. It's killer. Yeah. There's a big flask. Yep. yep. Is there a big flask? Yep, there's a big flask yeah. in the background. Oh, I love that. There's a bunch of little hidden things. That's awesome. Just seeing Gilmore move and laugh and flirt and just just be himself living his best life. Ugh, As makes me should. so happy. So perfectly animated. He is. They did such a good job. They, did. Oh, they, they captured it. I mean, it's just yeah. dead on. Yeah. Well, it's, it says it to Sunil. Sunil, who like, like there wasn't a character in this that I was more precious about than Gilmore. And, uh, and finding the right person to do it. And not only did he knock it out of the park with his audition and then working with him to like refine the role, and he just brought such a life and vibrancy to it. Uh, I'm just so happy. I'm Aww. so happy. Perfect casting. Perfect yeah. casting. Mm. Thank you, Sunil. So, without further ado, the third, I was about to say and final, that is incorrect, but final for tonight, episode tonight, yeah. the, of The Legend of Vox Machina, The Feast of Realms. Yes. Oh, yeah. Feast of Realms. Feast of Realms. <laughs> like a broken record. This is a good show. Thank it's you. really, really well done. We like it. it. Oh, we like it. I mean, Percy could have been a little more shirtless, but that's, oh, we can my. save that for season two, I suppose. <laughs> Just taking some notes. Okay. Shout out to Amazon Studios for letting us make it a song. Yes. Yes. Be yes. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Papa Amazon, for letting us uh, talk about dicks and anal beads. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> let's uh, talk about questions and also talk about answers, yet. shall we? We're not done yet. We're going to do just a little more Q&A. This is a little more Q&A. This is the yeah. last Q&A of the night. Let's do it. Um, starting off with Matt. For um, Zaddy Silas Briarwood, and that scene <laughs> with Vax. First of all, Zaddy. how dare you? Second of all, <laughs> what the fuck? Third of all, what was it like creating and voicing <laughs> this iconic villain? Oh, it was delicious. Oh. Um, Giving them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, I mean, I love the Briarwoods, and Silas and Delilah's dynamic is one of my favorite parts of Campaign 1. Uh, and so when I had the opportunity, we were discussing like what who I would play from like a larger you know, involved standpoint for the series. I was like, I honestly, unless unless people are gonna argue, like I, I would love to vie for Silas, and nobody argued. That was and a no-brainer. So he's, I wanted to play him off. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, we did fight in the parking lot. <laughs> Fair knuckle brawl. And these yeah. are some earlier nice designs. Yeah, you get to see some of the ponytail and the glasses stuff. We had some thoughts and some cool stuff here that that almost got used, but I'm I'm really happy with the final design. The bearded Mercer version, the professional I like the version. Mercer version. Yeah. <laughs> um, I a little think too on the nose. Somebody also said that he got buffer as the designs went on. I vaguely remember somebody talking we, about we, that. We did, we did. Originally, like in those earlier ones, you could see he's a little more lithe, but we wanted him to visually his fight style to be a little more bestial. We wanted like when he when he stands, not only is he in in strike an intimidating, you know. Visage, but when he and Grog show down in any future combat stuff, we want him to just look like a feral beast of the night, you know. And so part of that too is just talking with Phil and giving him a little more meat on his bones, giving him a little more muscle, and like just a little something that looked a little more powerful at all times, let alone when he was actually trying to kill somebody. <laughs> right. Wolf-like almost. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the there's that one shot of him next to Delilah where you really realize how much she's tiny next to him Compared like to him, yeah. he's actually a large man vampire vampire man yeah yeah previously a large man now a large yeah. vampire now a large vampire man he's a beast uh took him from daddy to zaddy there you, you go will. right um <laughs> also we talked a little bit about it earlier but the fight scene with the briarwoods was just so cool Ugh. it was just so dynamic and you got to see different camera angles different points of views, like you were talking about the POV from Pike and trying to concentrate on those spells. What was the process going into a complicated fight scene like this? I mean, man, I really, like, the board artist just pulled it off. Like, I don't, I feel like we didn't have to do a lot of tweaking and changing during that sequence. Like, they really had it down. It was amazing. Like, right out of the gate, like, the board artists, and they're so talented. Like, the director, the board artists are just so great. But, like, yeah, we didn't have to do a lot of tweaking and changing. It was more about, like, how long is, you know, like, Silas's sword, uh, you know, uh, Cravenage, how long is the sword gonna grow mm -hmm. when it starts to absorb blood? Or, um, you know, like, w how is uh, Pike gonna, like, you know, buff Grog or, you know, just 
little moments, things that we were trying to figure out, logic out, but yeah, I mean, the board artist just killed it. Yeah, also I think like in the first couple episodes, um, we were we were still sort of establishing like how brutal is this is this show? A, a lot of a lot of animators, uh, you know, most of their work is with children's animation, um, <laughs> it, it, just because there's not a lot of adult animation up, up until now. Right. Hopefully that'll change after shows like ours. Um, but a, a lot of the animators and board artists, even on our show, uh, did extensive work in children's animation. And so the first couple of boards from episode 101 or 102, you know, the characters would get bumped or knocked back or, or anything, but they weren't like severely injured. <laughs> right. And so I, I think we did a lot of work in the first couple episodes to say like, no, 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 hurt us. Hurt everyone real, real bad. It should yeah. look real, real bad. And by the time we got to episode three, they they got it and they were like, "Oh, you want me to hurt your character? I'll fuck up your character." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, we're kind of talking about the process of animation and what goes into it. And I know that the fans at home are probably going to want to see some really cool behind the scenes uh, looks at that. So we have this little animatic of one of the scenes from episode three to Ooh, show yeah. to everybody. Check at out. You get to see how it starts. Yeah. Lady Briarwood. I did as you ordered. Your belongings are here. I'll drive, thank you. Stop them! Come visit us sometime, Percival. You're always welcome back home. No! I had them! I had them! And you let them slip away! I, I didn't, Everlight. No, no, please. You. Start talking. Why were the Briarwoods here? What were they after? I, they were invited, like you, by Sovereign Uriel. Silas and Delilah have never left the confines of Whitestone before. Why here? Why now? Answer me. Now. What the actual fuck? Holy shit, Percy, what are you doing? Please, I'm, I'm, I'm only a servant. They, they don't tell me anything. Please don't hurt me. Please don't... <laughs> Pretty cool. Person. Um, but anyway, that was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. it was in control. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I you can see how it translates from from that to the uh, to the final. Uh, in that, in the animatic, I think uh, Ashley Johnson was still scratching Delilah's voice because mm -hmm. uh, Gray hadn't recorded yet. But most of it, I mean, translated. It's just like a one to one. Uh, yeah, pick up. So the board artists just did, did a ton of work. Mm -hmm. It's oh, yeah. so cool to see how this happens from storyboarding to animatics to the show that we're watching because I feel like sometimes you just turn on a show and don't know the detail that goes behind it. So it's really awesome to be able to acknowledge these creatives and say thank you, oh, yeah. thank you, thank you all. for what you guys do. Yeah, yeah. For your yeah. killer work. I, I wanted to do this when I was younger. Like I went, I was spent most of my teen years up until like college age to become an animator. And mm -hmm. so I studied all of this, studied the whole process of animation and was hoping to go into it and then my life diverged and went in different ways. So in a weird way, working on this has been like a homecoming, like to be able to, to get involved with this again and, and to watch other far more talented people than I could have ever been uh, come in and elevate this. So I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to be a part of the process again, really. Yeah. Well, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but specifically for this episode, this, it pulled a lot from the stream itself that people have already seen. So mm -hmm. how did you condense all of that important information into a 22 minute episode? Carefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think something we said before was the Briarwood arc, we did the math at one point, it's between 35 and 40 hours total from, the, from our live play show. Jeez. And we had to squeeze it down to six. So, I mean, the, the accordioning that happens is, is extreme, but in each one of these episodes, you have to pick, you know, what are the story arcs that you're telling? What are the journeys that the individual characters are going on? What do you want to focus? And if we have any room left over, what seeds can we plant for, you know, short-term story arcs and later episodes and things that will fall later down the line? Right. It's a lot of like picking those favorite beats and 
really just rearranging and combining until we're we're satisfied that the essence of the things that might not make it in there are still being carried forward. Mm -hmm. Important right. character moments are still honored, and anything that that maybe not be important to the story, but we want to wink towards, that's when it turns into Easter eggs and mm -hmm. fun little lines and, and nods and winks here and there. And those lines that drop so naturally, out of Taliesin, right? Like, your soul is forfeit. You know, we were playing and he says that and everybody just kind of looks over at him like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's You look over and he it. actually has the mask oh, yeah. on yeah. in the VO yeah. booth Smoke's and you're like, oh, okay. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Psycho. Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's so good. Oh, gosh, yeah. I know that you guys have a lot of story to condense already, but mm -hmm. there are Vox Machina origin comics and stories and books out there. Yes. I know this is kind of a spoiler, but will, <laughs> will there be any of that in maybe some animated episodes down the line to get a peek at Vox Machina's past? Interesting. I, you'll have to tune in to find out. Uh, but if if we want that stuff to get in, I should really read the comic books at some point. Or, or all. Sam! I mean. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I, I've heard they're very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, There's also, you know, a book out now. and. I'm not we're, much of a reader. We worked hard on those comics. I know we did. I love them. I've got them all. Sam doesn't even read the scripts. I, we actually That's get very them true. and we hold like <laughs> yeah. stage. He just wings it. For him and mm -hmm. he's like, oh, I like it. Can we pause here? And we all three. And then we keep reading. It's <laughs> <laughs> fair, it's fair. Um, we were talking about the inside jokes, the little Easter eggs, things that you dropped if you can't complete the whole arc in a whole episode. Are, do you guys have any favorite reoccurring jokes or little Easter eggs throughout these first three episodes? I mean, or seeing, sure seeing Matt pop up in, in all the episodes is, is always a delight. Um, yeah. I mean, doors, we gotta talk about doors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> doors are a recurring theme for sure. Yeah, we don't, we don't overdo it, but it's definitely a recurring theme. <laughs> there are a few more, but they're later in the season, so we, we'll, we'll keep those in our back pocket for, for now. Yeah, there's some, there's some fun they things won't to disappoint. get to. Yeah. All right. But they're enough that critters out there will be like, I see you. Oh, I see oh, what sure. you're doing. Yeah, definitely. I'm right. excited. I can't wait for you guys to see the next episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait. The next three it's episodes. It's a good batch. The next three episodes. It's a real good batch. It's Four like, six. it just keeps getting better. It gets better and better. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I think Four is my favorite one. Four is really good. I think Four is, uh, yes. No, I You got excited. to see it? That's right. No. I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, so <laughs> since you guys have seen fan art of your characters before, uh, an anime series was even a thought. Uh, can you tell us what it was like the first time you saw your characters animated, animated? Like what? I, I, I can I can speak to yeah. one. The the very first rough storyboard that we had, they're, they're just they're just called roughs, right? Before we go into actual takes, and you'll get various revisions of the storyboards where you give notes. But they had us sit down with us at Titmouse where there were roughs presented, and they're they're barely sketches. Sometimes it'll be a close up, and you can see an expression of a character or something, but. Typically, the audio that we've recorded is dropped in, they're moving, it's happening multiple seconds and then minutes in a row, and there's a story building, and we were all sitting there just staring up at the screen of really mostly chicken scratch in some cases and just going like, Oh my God, Aww. oh my God, it's happening. And we would turn around and look at like the room of storyboard yep. artists and we'd be like, you guys. So they're like, holy shit, these guys are into it. <laughs> no wrong, but the enthusiasm was so real because yeah. it was a dream that had, you know, existed for years. And it was just such a special, special moment. We had a lot of those like early, early design, like just breakout meetings where afterward, we'd all go out into the parking lot and then just stay in the parking lot for a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's just like talk and be emotional and pinch ourselves and and wonder how. Gotta it's... drive home at some point, but it's not happening right yep. now. <laughs> it's amazing. It's wild. Yeah, it's such Aww. a odd experience. Aww. So wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for helping helm this thing, man. Oh, well, I mean, thank you for allowing me to, you know, be a part of this. It's just incredible. Thank you, Mika, for making this all happen. Oh my Thank God, you guys, I was wondering when somebody was gonna mention that. <laughs> I've secretly been helming this whole project the whole time. Do it, do well, genuinely, your friendship is also very helpful through all these intense times, so thank you. Oh, wow. I'm being that serious. Come on. No, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I would respond, but then I'd get actually too emotional right now. We're live, and I love you. Love you too. <laughs> we're actually live. This is. Yeah, I know we're actually no, live. That's, that's, that's kind of wild. We're live. Real. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the music for the show is actually phenomenal. We've been talking about it the whole few hours we've been sitting here watching the show. Um, Sam, can you talk a little bit uh, what it's like about making the Scanlon songs? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I yes, I mentioned it before, but uh, the Scanlon songs are a collab between me and, and Peter Habib. Um, and we just sort of come up with stuff together. It's, it, it, the process is very weird. Sometimes I'll sing a voice memo and, and email it to him and he'll turn it into a song or sometimes he'll do the same thing and, and send me back a track. But um, we've come up with a lot of really weird rhymes and, and a lot of gross stuff. And some songs that didn't even make it into the series that oh, yeah. are also gross and fun and exciting. Maybe I'll get to play with those uh, for y'all sometime. Now, is it a chicken and the egg thing where, like, does the script come first and then the song, or the song and then the <laughs> script supports it? it? It's happened both ways, as yeah. you all know. Like, sometimes we'll get to a, a point in the animatic where, like, something cool happens, and, I, and I'm like... Can I write a song for this moment? <laughs> and you guys are like, I mean, okay. <laughs> I like to think yes. it's always reluctant. They're yeah. like, eh, if you have the to. The new work is always yes, but. <laughs> the, the first episode, the, the big intro <sighs> song, I remember telling Sunjin and the animation team, like, I've written a minute and 15 minutes, uh, a minute and 15 second song for this. And they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, it's way too long. Make, make it like 30 seconds tops. And I was like, well, when you hear it, though. And then we played it for him, and he was like, all right, yep, we're doing it. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> it, was, it was dead on. So what I'm hearing is there's going to eventually be a full musical episode. God, I remember. Oh, I hope so. You know, <laughs> I think it out loud sometimes, us, and then they... Well, if they happen within the studio. Finally, finally put that, that musical theater degree to good use. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, well, now it has to happen. All right, season two. I want to hear Travis go. sing. Yeah. Let's do Spelled it. it out. Well, yeah, speaking of hearing people sing, <laughs> Sam, Boy. could you give us a small little taste no, I really, of Pull My Beads of Love I live really for the people? I'm not prepared. No, no, no. I'm you not. have, Sam. Guys, it's, Sam, you were talking about gross be... songs. You're talking about anal beads. <sighs> Sam. Okay, if I must. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh! Now, I don't really know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, when you're looking at a gnome like me. No, but I can tell you something special. Just go ball, go ball. I've been talking with me, could be. I got oh. a twinkle in my eyes. <laughs> Hit the lights and I'll tell you a surprise. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> Here comes the high note. <laughs> and the figures explode. Put on my motherfucking beat. Mika. <laughs> oh my god! Well, that... Where did the disco ball come from? <laughs> we put the disco ball in just for this, man. <laughs> Fucking... You asshole! It's amazing. It's a part of this set that I hope will come back again. Oh, oh I have to now. Oh. I... Why am I here? <laughs> Well, that does it for tonight's watch party, you guys. <laughs> Make sure, if you really want to join us next fire? Tuesday, February 8th at 7 p.m. Pacific, to watch the next three episodes of the, where is he going? Of The Legend of, oh, there he is. <laughs> the Legend of Fox Magina with Taliesin, Liam, Laura, and special guest Sung Jin Han. Good night, Critters. Good night, Critters. <laughs> we love you. Love you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>